Today I'm going to do a video about this um, component tester which was sent to me free of charge by Banggood. Um, so this is described as the original Highland M644 um, tester. So you can see it tests quite a few things, transistors, zener diodes um, and ESR which is interesting. Um, so these are only £13.49 uh, for this specific model. There's actually loads of variants available. This is the M644 version which has the 80 mega um, 644 which has uh, a slightly higher end analog front end on, in front of its ADC. Um, so what I wanted to do was see how it compared to these devices which I bought uh, and got donated by Peak Electronics. So some of these I bought, some of them I got donated. Um, but I've used these quite extensively over the past few years and uh, they are very dependable and give really consistent readings um, and obviously they're, they're packaged in nice caseworks and everything and, and do the job but um, if you try and buy all of these you know you're probably spending well over £200 um, and although you know you can get these calibrated so uh, you can depend on these readings it'll be interesting to see how they compare um, to this much cheaper device. Right, so to start with I thought we'd just test a range of resistors. Um, so we've got uh, 10 mega ohms all the way down to 0 0.22 ohms. So this one will be a bit of a challenge because um, you know the, the traces and in this case of the, the peak meter we've got the impedance of these leads. It's not doing a four wire measurement so uh, I'm expecting the reading to come out a little bit high. Um, so this didn't come with any instructions but I'm assuming we poke it in uh, these labelled 1 to 3 for general components uh, and then we must just turn it on with this so it does a little battery check and a resistor between 1 and 3 and it's coming out as 0 0.26 ohms so it's not far off, this is um, a wire round metal film resistor let's see what the peak meter picks it up as it's probably a little bit higher with all of this cable length in yeah, there we go. So it's moving around a little bit. It, this one does a continuous measurement the whole time, but you can see it's generally um, about 0 0.28 ohms. So uh, yeah, this one's a little bit closer, possibly to be expected because of the shorter leads. Um, let's see what we've got next. So 200.1K and it is a 200 ohm resistor. Let's see what Highland does. And that's just reading very slightly under. So the next, 10 mega ohms, so that's at the high end. So it won't read it on the peak actually, it picks it up as a capacitor. Yep, no, it's not working on that one. So that's quite interesting. Um, it does the resistors quite well. I mean, you're never going to use it for making precision measurements, but um, yeah, for component identification, that seems to be doing the job. Uh, let's have a look at, um, we've got some diodes here. These are just standard uh, 1N4148. So we've got a different piece of equipment on this side. The uh, DCA Pro. There we go. Uh, diode junction. Um, forward voltage 0.673 at 5 milliamps. So slightly higher, um, uh, sorry, a slightly lower current. I'm assuming that's the, the test current. Um, and that's coming out just reading a very slightly higher uh, forward voltage on the diode there but it's correctly identified that it is a diode um, yeah I'm not sure you'd ever really sort of use the parameters here to any great degree of accuracy you're probably only going to be concerned whether it's a diode a zener um, or maybe um, a shocky diode or that kind of thing so it's just ballpark figures but uh, yep no problems with that um, got some transistors. Yeah, I'm not sure whether I like the ZIF socket or not. It's, this one doesn't seem to quite fit in, so when you're playing with the transistor, it was starting to rock from side to side. But yeah, that's come out with a, a PMP transistor with a beta of uh, 358. Uh, somewhere in the region in terms of the gain. I mean, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of these parameters are fairly useless. You're never going to rely on the HFE of a transistor for any practical purposes, really, unless you're literally just switching and just want to get a ballpark figure for the base resistor. So um, that seems fine. No problems there. 
Yeah, so let's pick that up with uh, a gain of only 20 MPN transistor, which it is. And yeah, pretty similar thing really. Yeah, so it seems to do the business all right on um, your standard type of components. Let's have a look at some capacitors. Right, so let's test out an electrolytic capacitor. So we've got a Panasonic FM series capacitor, so this should be fairly low ESR, 47 microfarads. So let's try and poke this in here. I think the SIF socket's going to make things a little bit complicated because um, on these capacitors, one leg's longer than the other, so you have to bend it. There we go, 49 mic with 0.18 ohm ESR. 48 and 0.16 ohms, so pretty similar. Not too bad at all, really. Actually, I've just read it says low resistance meter. I'm just interested to see what this does with this 0.22 ohm resistor. Yeah, it reads 0.24, so it's a little bit closer with this one. Right, so uh, we've got a tantalum capacitor here. I have no idea what this will do. What value is that? 0.1 microfarad, I think. No, ESR meter doesn't want to know on that one. What about the LCR meter? So nearly 100 nanofarads. That might be outside the range of what the ESR70 is designed for. Let's see what this tester does. It does, yeah, 98 nanofarads with an ESR of 16 ohms. And then just finally we've got a, um, a non-polarised electrolytic. I don't know whether this will make any difference, probably not. But uh, let's see. Battery's going flatter, it's gone down a little bit. Interesting. About, I think it's 4.7 mic, so it's coming out just a little bit higher. 4.7 mic, 1.2 ohms, so uh, small discrepancy there. But uh, overall not too bad actually. Right, so we'll just uh, quickly test a couple of Zener diodes just to prove a point. Um, so this one's rated for 10 volts and 9.79 volts, 9.89 volts, so just slightly closer, and we've got a 5.1 volt Zener here, and this one's just reading slightly closer, 5.03 volts. So I think you get the idea. It seems to um, really do the job, and, you know, just in this, um, hopefully not too long, a uh, few minutes of, of testing this device, you can see I've used um, four other pieces of equipment, uh, you know, we've used quite a few bits of equipment to test uh, those components and those have all been replaced by, you know, this for quick testing. Um, like I said, the, the DCA Pro has extra functionality, so that definitely is worth the money. You can plug it into the PC and, um, you know, you can do transistor curves and that kind of thing. And the ESR meter is is really good as well and and the lcr meter obviously does extra functions so you can test at varying frequencies and that kind of thing but just for component identification this is actually really good value and these things really interest me because um it's not a case of just plugging together some components and getting it to do stuff they've really used the functionality that's built into the uh, the microcontroller there they're using the gpios uh, all of the functions to really exploit uh, the measurement techniques that you can use to measure these components. So um, there is a link that I'll put down below. Uh, I think there's an, e e sorry, an EEV blog thread, uh, but also there's a document by uh, an author which I can't remember the name of, unfortunately, but I'll link it down below because it's really fascinating. It's got a lot of information about how these devices work, how the measurements are taken, and I'd really recommend that you, you have a read through it. I had a quick flick through um, just today uh, but not, didn't get a chance to properly read it. But it's got some really interesting information, particularly about how the measurements are made, and it will really help um, help understand how um, you know how the components work, how they can be measured, and that kind of thing. So uh, I'll link those down below. If you want to buy one of these, that's available at Banggood, and I'll put the product link below as well. Um, there's quite a few different variants. I picked this one because it had the slightly higher spec um, microcontroller, so theoretically um, had a few extra functions. Unfortunately, I think it's limited by the um, the voltage reference on this board. Is probably what's just throwing off the reading slightly. Um, I might see if there's a way of calibrating it or maybe see if there's a modification we can do um, to improve the accuracy a little bit. But as a 
as a piece of equipment for just over £10. That's really good value. And um, you can get ones with OLED displays and all, all kinds of things. But uh, I think the only downside I'd say at the moment is we're already seeing the voltage creeping down because this backlight is on. Um, it's an LED backlight and it's on the moment you uh, turn on the device. Yeah, I think that's probably the only downside. What I might do is just drop the resistor, uh, increase the resistor value to drop the, um, the LED current because the backlight isn't really needed. But uh, there we go. Uh, so well done if you managed to stick to the end of this video. Uh, and until next time, thanks for watching.